Today, there are more electric cars on the world's roads than we've ever seen before, thanks to massive development in battery pack design that have improved not only energy density but also charging characteristics and thermal stability, we're finally at a point where long-range electric cars are no longer a pipe dream, at least for those who can currently afford them. By 2020, it's expected that economies of scale will have dropped the price of lithium-ion battery packs to a point where electric vehicles will be on parity in terms of cost with internal combustion engine vehicles. And at that point, especially if the trend towards political instability in the Middle East continues, it will be a complete no-brainer for folks to drive electric, even if they're still sitting on the fence today. Yet, the same time as electric cars are truly taking off in popularity, we're beginning to hear continued warnings from analysts stating that supplies of cobalt, one of the metals used in the majority of electric vehicle battery packs, and a byproduct of copper mining, won't be able to keep up with demand. If some reports are to be believed, we could see increasing cobalt prices, which have tripled over the past two years already, eat into any cost reductions made by economies of sale in lithium-ion battery production. And that could mean electric cars will continue to be more expensive than perhaps they would otherwise be, stalling the EV revolution. Or does it? The most recent report from Bloomberg New Energy Finance suggests that at least part of the problem with cobalt supplies comes from the fact that a large concentration of the Earth's cobalt is in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a place not exactly known for its geopolitical stability. This not only means that there's a long time to bring a new cobalt mine online, but it also makes it tough for automakers and battery companies to ensure they've got an uninterrupted supply of cobalt if they're looking at the DRC as their only source of the stuff. Add in a recent Ebola outbreak in the DRC, and it looks like the perfect storm. And that's even before you look at the challenges facing companies who wish to ensure their cobalt supplies are mined responsibly. The DRC, for example, produces 60% of the world's cobalt, a fifth of which is extracted by hand. And while many large companies do try to ensure their cobalt is responsibly mined, nearly all of that hand extracted cobalt is mined in unregulated, unofficial small mining operations, which employ women and children as young as four years old in conditions that are essentially slave labor. If you've got this far in the video and find yourself questioning if you even want to drive an electric car, frankly, I wouldn't blame you. After all, nobody wants to be connected to child labor. And given that many of the world's largest consumer battery suppliers buy their cobalt from Chinese traders who do source some of their cobalt from undocumented sources in the DRC, it's not always easy to trace where that cobalt comes from. Luckily for us, however, automakers are acutely aware of the issues, and some, although not all, are pressuring their suppliers to only acquire cobalt from responsibly mined sources. To incentivize suppliers further, many automakers are signing long contracts to both secure supply of cobalt in the future and with riders on how cobalt is sourced. Mercedes-Benz, for example, has its own in-house audit process to ensure its cobalt doesn't come from child mining, while BMW is using blockchain technology to track where all of its cobalt comes from. At least 10 other automakers have also signed up to pledge to better track and source their cobalt as well, meaning, hopefully, the majority of electric car cobalt supplies are becoming far more ethically sourced than they once were. But there's also another thing we need to take into consideration, battery chemistries. For example, the first generation Nissan LEAF used zero cobalt in its battery packs, although the second generation LEAF does use some cobalt. And Nissan, like other automakers, is under pressure to ensure that cobalt is ethically sourced. Tesla CEO Elon Musk, meanwhile, recently announced that Tesla is slashing cobalt content to almost nothing in its battery packs, replacing it with nickel instead. Given how many battery packs Tesla is making today, both for the automotive and energy world, that reduction in cobalt consumption by Tesla will have a massive impact on global prices. While we're at it, nearly every automaker out there who is serious about bringing electric cars to market is investing heavily in new battery technologies. BMW, General Motors, Hyundai, Kia, Honda, Nissan, Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen, and Mercedes-Benz are all working on solid-state technology. Although I should note here that Nissan still seems skeptical on its future applications, 
despite working on it, claiming several large breakthroughs would be needed before solid state reaches commercial viability. And of course, there's Fisker, which claims it will have a solid state battery ready to put in its production e-motion in just two years' time. In summary then, yes, global demand for cobalt currently outstrips supply, and it's something we're already seeing in the electric car world. The high-end ionic EV battery shortage is most likely caused by raw material supply issues, if I had to guess. But just as automakers are finding more ways to move away from using large amounts of rare earth metals in electric car motors, so too are they looking to non-cobalt chemistries for next-generation battery packs and in the meantime are looking to ethically source and track where their cobalt comes from to ensure they're not supporting child labour. For now then, I don't think we need to worry too much about the impact cobalt has on electric car batteries, and thus electric car production and adoption, but I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are in the comments below. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to both this channel and Transport Evolved Take Two. And of course, as usual, if you'd like to support this channel, then you can follow one of the two links below to make your donations, no matter how large or small. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep evolving.